Um, good uh, afternoon, morning, or uh, noon to everyone here. Um, we'll start in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, uh, welcome to our uh, webinar, Safe and CMMI Adaptation in a Defense Contractor. Um, just a little bit about the logistics before we start. Um, you can see that you have a Q&A section. Uh, please add any and all questions that you might have in that section. Um, we'll find time to touch about that uh, probably towards the uh, end of the webinar. Um, you can also uh, use the chat functions if it's not a specific question. Now, um, my name is Ruslan Bursting. I am the Director of Business Development for Agile Sparks. And uh, before introducing Danielle, uh, who is going to be your presenter, let me introduce you a little bit about Agile Sparks um, in general. So Agile Sparks is an agile consulting and training company and offers global solutions with presence in Europe, Israel, India, and of course, the United States. Um, we are a scaled agile gold uh, SPCT partner and a scrum.org partner. And usually we provide and you know, almost every flavor of uh, scaling agile uh, that has. Um, during the last 13 years, we, we have a privilege to work with um, over 400 co companies worldwide. Some of them, you know, are startups, but um, more, most of them are Fortune 500 companies. Uh, during that time, we had a ton, the time to write a lot of uh, case studies, and um, you will notice that our case studies are very full of numbers and specific figures and how we managed to improve that. Hopefully someday we will be able to add uh, a few more companies here um, that we work with right now and we cannot disclose, but those are the companies. P feel, free, feel free to visit uh, agilesparks.com about and client case studies. You will find um, you'll find um, everything that has to do with uh, the numbers and how we, we work with the company and their story. And obviously the success factor is the willingness to organize around value, which is a key element with both SAFE and Scrum and Nexus and so forth. Now to the more important part, let me introduce Danielle. Danielle Lin served 13 years and three tours in Iraq, Afghanistan and Kuwait as an army combat soldier transportation logistics and aviation support. And it was a very long title, but I assure you she did very important things. Uh, in the last six years, Daniela was a leader for Jacobs and she is the director of quality and per performance excellence within the critical mission solution performance excellence group. Uh, Daniela is leading the adaptation of and, and implementation of CMMI and scaled agile framework at multiple CMS organization insurance, CMS wide enterprise efforts in these areas and expanding the capability of the implement strategy for CMS business management systems. Um, just trust me, she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Uh, so without further ado, I want to pass the torch to Danielle. Uh, Danielle, uh, take it from here. Thanks, Ruslan. Um, just to give everybody a little bit of background also, um, this uh, presentation was actually uh, originally submitted to the CMMI Capability Counts Conference for 2020. Um, didn't end up actually happening because of COVID. Um, however, the case study did win um, best paper in the, in the government track um, for, uh, for that submission. Um, so uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about um, the current uh, concurrent adoption of CMMI and SAFE uh, in Jacobs Software Engineering Center, which I'll refer to um, going forward as JSEC. And you'll hear me slip kind of in between um, saying they and we. Um, as Ruslan mentioned, you know, I've been with Jacobs for the last uh, six years and was part of JSEC um, when they went through their CMMI v2.0 appraisal um, and transformed the organization uh, to a, uh, a, an agile way of working using the scaled agile framework. Um, so uh, again, JSEC is, um, you know, they're uh, the center of excellence for uh, software development within Jacobs. 
what they do is they build mission planning and navigation software for the Department of Defense, uh, foreign governments, and uh, direct commercial sales. And um, they also provide consulting and coaching services for other organizations within Jacobs um, and its customers on a wide, wide range of technical uh, topics to include agile software development, um, DevOps, and cybersecurity. Um, next slide, please. Uh, and I talked you through that, so next slide. Thanks. Um, so the challenge that JSEC had for this transition was that they needed to remain competitive in the DOD contractor space while transitioning from CMMI version 1.3 to CMMI um, v2.0, while also adopting and implementing a new agile way of working. Um, so, you know, as is the case with uh, most DOD contracting organizations, they had a very limited budget um, and resources to put towards such a, a large um, uh, improvement effort. Um, next slide. So uh, we, we lined out some assumptions for, for success. Um, and for this transition to be successful, uh, they needed these assumptions and conditions to be true and to, to remain true. Um, and those were that the senior leadership um, needed to change their entire approach to management and become servant leaders. Um, we needed the customers to participate in all aspects of, of product development. Um, and everybody in the organization needed to be accountable for the success of the transformation and sustainment of the processes. Um, so investments into resources to automate um, and things like that uh, needed to be made. Uh, next slide. So um, this slide here really focuses on um, why, you know, why performance excellence. So if you look at the uh, center concentric circles, uh, they represent a very natural progression of organizations um, that are operating in the defense space or the government contracting space. And um, most of them start out in the area of compliance or conformity down here at the bottom. Um, and just to make the distinction, um, you're compliant with regulations and you're conformant with standards. So in other words, um, these organizations, they are really just maintaining conformity uh, with regulations, things like DFARS, and they're really just relevant in terms of competitiveness, that they're just kind of maintaining the status quo. And then it's very natural for organizations to move up um, to the next realm of, of minimum uh, quality. And this is where they start to adopt standards like ISO, or AS9100, um, CMMI maturity level two even. And in this state, organizations are, um, they're kind of pursuing paper, they're pursuing a, a, a certification, but not really yet embodying um, the values and the behaviors that are required for performance excellence or continuous improvement. Um, those are just not largely not there. So at some point, um, when they realize that minimum quality is not enough to have dominance um, in the market or win new proposals, they start reaching up into that, that next tier, the continual improvement frameworks like Kanban and Kaizen, um, Lean, CMMI Maturity Level 3. Um, this is where we see that this moves the organization into the, the top tier in the marketplace in terms of competitiveness. Um, when an organization decides that, you know, just being competitive isn't their ultimate goal, they're going to then migrate into um, the, the next realm of performance excellence in engineering and operations. And this is really where organizations start to use statistical process control, um, CMMI maturities level four and five in this realm, um, they become eminent in the marketplace. Um, next slide, please. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the relationships between models, methods, and standards, and um, you know, to help organizations understand the relationship between SAFE and CMMI, we need to define these um, abilities. So um, you know, uh, 
I, I guess I want to start by talking about the difference between models and standards and methods, um, because a lot of times people use those labels, um, they use those words interchangeably, um, but they really have a, a, a very different purpose and different place um, in the pursuit of performance excellence. So models such as SEMA MI20 <clears throat> is what we call a, a whyability and a whatability model. And in terms of whyability, it provides descriptions of expected business uh, performance value from adoption of practices in the CMMI. And it's also a whatability model in the sense that it describes what to do, what you need to do in terms of successful product development and uh, service delivery. Standards by comparison are really just uh, what ability frameworks standards really describe what constitutes a minimum level of quality in product development and service delivery. And then we have methods um, and methods are what we call a, a how ability in the sense that they describe how to implement certain aspects of performance improvement um, techniques ceremonies um, things like milestone events practices um, and the like. Um, so now I'm going to share some of our aha moments that we had um, where we had some sort of epiphany or revelation about our experience at JSEC um, during this, this transition. So normally in a major um, defense acquisition program, you can have a period of performance that is 18 months to maybe eight years um, long. Um, and as this slide shows, there are very limited opportunities for finding and collecting appraisal artifacts um, in a waterfall um, software development life cycle. However, um, while conducting process audits against our Agile program, um, I started noticing that it was much, much easier uh, than I expected or that I was used to, um, to, to find those appraisal artifacts. And the more I thought about why this experience was different, um, I realized that really it was due to uh, our new processes and the iterative approach that Agile follows, where you know it breaks the work down into really small consumable pieces and then delivers that value in shorter intervals of time. So what this does is really allow for more checkpoints um, more opportunities to measure and adjust, and it simply generates CMMI-related evidence way more frequently, um, again, like than that traditional uh, waterfall approach. Next slide. And, and that is versus um, this slide here um, that has our teams um, and our processes, uh, you know, continually executing plan, do, check, adjust cycles. Um, as, as fast as possible to provide our customers with the best value in the shortest uh, sustainable lead time. So we want that, that functioning software at, at a fixed cadence, which supports fast feedback loops and ends up getting um, the customer more of what they want rather than what they think they wanted. Um, and to do this, you really need to have a, a lean mindset which is very, very different um, than what the government is used to experiencing, um, again, with those long lead times that are associated to your standard waterfall methodology for software um, development and delivery. And the iterative nature of this um, really enables our, our customers to see the solution as it's actually evolving, provide feedback um, on it and request changes throughout the development of the, the solution. And uh, this includes um, estimating and planning through to verification and validation and every single thing in between. Um, and then what SAFE does is provides the cadence and the synchronization for integrating frequently instead of late um, in product and product development. So it pulls all of that to, to the left. Um, increases learning and uh, lowers, lowers the cost of learning um, for your organization. Um, next slide. 
So, um, so the takeaway here really is just this slide is an example of how safe activities and ceremonies um, align with the CMMI practice areas. Um, just showing five here, but you can find alignment with SAFE and CMMI in every practice area. Um, on the previous slide, we talked a little bit about the rapid um, collection of objective evidence for a CMMI appraisal. And um, one of the reasons for that is being able to translate the activities and the events in SAFE um, and how those become enablers for practice areas in the CMMI. Um, so, for example, uh, the practices in estimating and planning in the CMMI um, are very easily addressed and safe by um, uh, multiple software sizing methods, um, you know, fixed iterations and, and durations, um, you know, uh, forecasted team capacity and, and velocity. Um, you know, cascading backlogs and then, um, you know, as you can read the, the, the rest of the items there. Um, in that list. Next slide, please. And uh, what this slide here does is um, show what the SAFE perspective is um, for how well CMMI and SAFE work together. Um, what it really does is, is illustrates the CMMI practice areas and where they fit within the SAFE framework. It sort of provides a mapping um, if you will, of where you can expect to look for evidence um, of the process that you're following. For example, um, if I were looking for an artifact to show that teams had planned their work, I could go to a number of backlogs to see that work items exist in their system of record as an output um, of PI planning and iteration planning. Um, just you know, as as an example, you can see the same thing for uh, requirements development and management, um, technical solution, product integration. Um, just a few of the the many touch points. Um, next slide. So uh, please don't try to line up the uh, the bullets here. Um, the items on on the left are very closely related to to the others on the right, um, but it is not a one for one relationship. Um, but these are the, the the touch points that you can leverage between the model and the framework. Um, you know things like uh, you know in agile having your your product owner involved in PI planning and iteration planning. Um, would support RDM 2.2 um, by having them involved real time in making decisions on developing requirements. Um, incomplete or unclear requirements and user involvement or lack thereof um, have been cited as uh, major factors that um, can really contribute to issues between business and technical experts. Um, and those things have a have a major impact on the success and the health of a project. Um, you know, one of the values of Agile asks us to focus on changing requirements versus working per plan. Um, and one of the Agile principles guides us to welcome changing requirements. And, and you know, in this Agile development environment, we really want to encourage requirement changes at our system demos and planning events. Um, as opposed to, again, the waterfall model where requirements need to be signed off before being passed to the next you know, phase or phase, phase gate um, in the life cycle. And requirements volatility is generally frowned upon. Um, so this changing of requirements doesn't mean that uh, the, the quality of the requirements can be compromised. Um, and in fact, um, it means that what we end up with is, is again, more of what the customer wants um, since we have those numerous attempts to iterate on the solution so we can better deliver on their intent um, as opposed to being constrained to delivering a predefined solution that may or may not be what they were looking for or maybe no longer needed. Next slide. So um, in traditional waterfall methods, uh, estimation is almost entirely done upfront. 
um, based on um, historical data, um, hours needed to deliver an entire project. And it's really difficult to go back and revise this plan without incurring the additional requirement of completing a, a contract modification. Um, with SAFE, however, we use relative um, sizing for estimation and only on near-term items. So this allows for flexibility and changes to the scope of the product and removes um, wasting time and costs associated with um, estimating items that may not actually ever get worked. Um, next slide. So um, for some people who are not really familiar um, with Agile, they, you know, one of the myths is that there's no planning at all. Um, and that actually couldn't be further from the truth. Um, we invest a lot um, in planning because that investment yields organizational alignment. Um, and in Agile, um, in the Agile context, we're always planning with the emphasis on those more near-term items to help us deliver some level of value to our customers and users as fast as possible. Um, so we plan you know, quarterly at uh, the PI uh, program increment planning event, um, biweekly at the start of our um, iterations for iteration planning, and then even um, daily at our, at our daily standups. And where SAFE supports plan um, 2.6 and, and 2.8 here um, is also by, by having a, a fist to five confidence vote at the end of PI planning, um, where everyone at the event, everyone who is involved um, at, and part of the um, delivery of the solution has an opportunity to agree or disagree on the feasibility of delivering um, on those program uh, objectives. Next slide. Um, so this one here, um, with respect to technical solution, um, if you look, take a look at um, TS uh, 3.2, um, develop alternative solutions for selected components. Um, this correlates to the practice of providing uh, demonstrations and prototypes um, for product owners and our end users. And uh, this allows the um, the stakeholders to see potential options without incurring the cost um, and really the risk that's associated with choosing only one solution, um, you know, very early on. Um, so an example um, actually at JSEC of something I witnessed um, at one of the, the inspect and adapt events was um, the team was demoing a new capability in the software. And one of the end users um, remarked that this particular workflow was really very cumbersome. Um, yes, it, it functioned um, as designed, um, but not something they would want to use if they could help it. Um, so what this did was immediately prompted one of our developers to return to his machine. Um, he very quickly prototyped a possible solution and introduced it the very next day. Um, the prototype was shown to the users in attendance with the question, is this, in, is this more in line with, with what you want? Is this more in line with what you were asking for? And the overwhelming response was yes. Um, and the team was then able to quickly modify their plans um, for the next uh, program increment planning event and to uh, include um, the completion of this prototype as, as a new feature. And you know, this demonstrates how quickly a PI can change the requirements and how listening to the users express their opinion um, led to a feature that, that they really wanted. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, in the practice area for PI, um, this is one of the CMMI practice areas where you really need to enable automation through tools, um, things like Azure DevOps or, or, or Jira, um, you know, items in the Atlassian suite. Um, product integration in software uh, is where you want minimal 
manual operations um, in software development. So, you know, we try to say if you touch it more than once, um, you should be looking for ways to improve and uh, improve that through automation. Um, next slide. So uh, there are some disconnects um, between um, SAFE and, and CMMI. And when you look at the first two SAFE uh, CMMI disconnects here on the screen, um, what you begin to realize, um, and something that we realized uh, very early on, is um, the CMMI is, 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 is program um, or, or project focused. Uh, whereas Agile and SAFE are more product focused. Um, Mick Kirsten actually has a great, great, great book um, uh, that discusses this um, project to product, um, which focuses largely on, um, you know, uh, the outcomes that you're looking to uh, achieve versus the output. Um, but anyway, uh, in a major defense acquisition project, pretty much the entire um, program is initially planned in the proposal phase uh, with effort, cost, um, schedule estimates, a program management plan, a huge IMS, um, program risk management plan, and so forth. Um, but in a safe environment, you would initially do product planning via, via the art. Um, you just wouldn't plan the project further than maybe the first few um, program increments. So um, your first program increment you are committed to, and then it gets a little bit fuzzier or more vague um, as you forecast out um, the next quarters or several quarters worth of, worth of work. Um, also, CMMI focuses on managing the program where, where um, you know, SAFE focuses more on managing the product. Um, so in SAFE, the traditional um, uh, measures to used for um, measuring program performance, um, CPI, uh, SPI, EV, <laughs> um, are really not much value to anyone. Um, in Agile and Safe, it's the product measures that are the most important, things like your um, product backlog burn down, um, team velocity and, and program um, predictability measures, um, early defect detection and removal, uh, minimal vi minimum viable product, innovation, and failing early and fast. Um, so SAFE is much better at um, rapid uh, demonstrations and, and prototyping than, than CMMI as well. Um, so, uh, you know, most defense contractors um, that have IRAD or R&D programs, um, which are pure experimentation or, or innovation with technology, um, the safe approach um, may not work as, as well. Um, you know, the, the, the teams have to know what they're building and they have to know, um, you know, the stories and what's, what is in that product backlog. And, um, that can be that can be difficult. Um, with the uh, with the re respect to the electromechanical and embedded software design and development, um, this also can be very difficult and 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 oftentimes um, you know struggle to be successful to to apply some of the safe methodologies um, to electromechanical and hardware engineering. Um, you know if you trying to think of writing a user story, for example, for a card or a circuit design um, and can be very costly to spin up a card um, or board and test it within a, a chassis, uh, within a sprint or an iteration. Um, and with hardware, it's, it's difficult to, to fail early and fail fast. It can be cost, um, cost prohibitive. And then um, finally, um, people, people try to um, blindly uh, apply agile or safe to product uh, production and manufacturing and can struggle to work. Um, there is a tremendous um, body of continuous improvement literature called Lean Six Sigma um, that evolved for manufacturing and works very well in that environment. Um, so here you may want to uh, um, apply some of the, those Lean um, Six Sigma uh, techniques. Next slide. 
So um, what were the biggest uh, lessons learned um, for us at, at JSEC? Um, well, you, you really want to try to get um, at least one person in your organization trained and certified as a safe program consultant. Um, this, this skill really is critical um, to, you know, allowing you to understand how your organization's CMMI and Agile processes need to work together. Um, this will in turn, you know, enable you to structure your process teams, um, things like your Lean Agile Center of Excellence um, and your engineering process group um, so that they can work towards mutual objectives um, in terms of process transformation. Um, you know, there's no plug and play solution for uh, all of the unique challenges that each organization face faces. So what you don't want to do is apply the framework as your process. You want to apply your learning of the framework to your specific implementation um, by tailoring and customizing um, the, the recommended safe or agile practice to suit your unique um, problem space, your unique program constraints. And not every agile practice is going to apply equally. Um, in every scenario. Um, so that's why um, SAFE really advocates for you to ground your process um, using those fundamentally stable values and principles so that you can be comfortable and confident that um, as you're making changes, you're making those decisions for the right reasons. Um, you know, uh, next, um, yes, the transition from CMMI um, you know, uh, 1.3 to 2.0, um, you know, you want to have a lead appraiser that is experienced um, with, with Agile or, or with SAFE. Um, having unfettered access to, to an appraiser that has that knowledge and experience um, to be able to bounce ideas off of, um, this is what gave us that real-time guidance and accelerated learning um, within JSEC and We'll, we'll do the same for you. And then um, really the, the last thing here is that um, when, we were, when we were just thinking um, about new methods and practices, um, we, we didn't initially um, appre fully appreciate um, how difficult fundamental culture change would be. And um, you know, now we realize that you know, continuous improvement uh, continuous learning, um, it's, it's more of an attitude, it's more of a mindset that is necessary um, to influence uh, behavior changes in order to improve performance and produce better outcomes. It is not just a matter of changing the mechanics um, of the way that, 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 we, that we work. Um, so, you know, first comes, you know, adopting new practices, um, those practices, you know, are, are designed to change, um, to change behavior, to produce a, a, a different outcome. Um, and then, uh, you know, those behaviors become culture. Um, it becomes, you know, the, the way your organization works um, and, and, and what we strive for, um, sustained habit, habit and persistence. Um, you know, we don't abandon those things um, in times of stress or duress. Um, this is just the way we do our work um, day in and day out. And that habit is, is hard to break and success is a habit. Next slide, please. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys um, read this um, really quick. Um, this was from a Harvard Business Review article um, that talks about one of the major values or benefits that you get um, from, from a high trust environment um, that SAFE and CMMI both um, strive to um, implement. So, um, so what the takeaway really is here from this um, from this excerpt. Um, hopefully, you know what what you'll see is um, there is there is value. There is a, a true dollar value 
um, associated with working in a high trust, um, highly collaborative environment um, like SAFE and, and CMMI um, promote. Um, next slide, please. So, um, you know, our advice to you, um, you know, uh, you know, really, I, I guess normally you you would think um, an organization should probably only take on one major transformation or transition at a time. Um, otherwise, you know, the sheer uh, volume or amount of change is is a lot of pressure. It's too much pressure and stress for some people. Um, but in the case of JSEC in this organization, um, transitioning from CMMI uh, 1.3 to 2.0 and becoming agile by adopting SAFE at the same time was the right thing to do um, because of the synergy that we discovered between the framework and the CMMI. Um, for both transitions, uh, we knew we had to fundamentally redesign our processes, um, everything the process architecture, um, how it was represented and accessed, how the teams used the processes. Um, so my advice here is uh, if you need to do a, a complete demo, uh, demolition and renovation on your processes anyway, um, you, may, you, you may as well save time and money and do that demo and reno uh, together to accommodate all of those changes. Um, and then also engage that, that lead appraiser who has that knowledge at, um, in Agile um, and experience uh, as early as possible. And what they'll do is help you find the, the V2.0 gaps and provide you with guidance on how to address them through safe um, or Agile approaches. So you want to um, integrate CMMI adoption and appraisals into your Agile roadmaps. Um, when we outlined each roadmap, we noticed that there were a lot of common points. Um, and so we com combined the two and merged those two um, governance, governance groups or leadership teams um, to, to develop one roadmap. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, you might start out with two teams, but, um, you know, you'll find that. Um, you share common objectives. So, you know, working to merge them into one uh, unified effort, um, you know, with your, your SPC um, or your agile experts teaching your engineering process group how to apply uh, those agile methods to process development and um, deployment. So uh, there were a few things that, you know, we, we could have done better. Um, and um, that is, you know, working with uh, senior management and leadership to establish clearly defined objectives and targets for CMMI and safe adoption. Um, you know, really clearly um, outlining those, those organizational objectives and how they cascade down to your, your project or your product teams. Um, you, you don't want to accept vague or ambiguous or squishy goals like we want to be better um, or we want to improve. You really have to put some numbers to process performance um, if you want to see that um, return on performance excellence um, and, and, and understand how um, to achieve those uh, performance improvement targets. Um, and then, uh, you know, kind of echoing my earlier comment about merging your engineering process group and your Lean Agile Center of Excellence, um, do that early on, but clearly define their respective process management and change management roles and responsibilities so that every situation that you encounter, um, there isn't a question that arises, um, you know, in that, you know, uh, with, a, with a lengthy discussion or, or debate. Um, and then lastly, um, you don't want to defend your, your current processes um, just because you are comfortable with them. Um, you know, uh, instead, you know, listen to and trust those who are driving the transition. Um, be comfortable, you know, become very comfortable, uh, you know, or strive to be comfortable um, with challenging yourself um, and the way you've always worked. So, 
Um, that isn't saying that what you're doing is 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 not good, is not value added, but in everything you, you know you do, you want to ask yourself, you know, am I doing it this way because that's all that I know? Um, or are there better, more efficient or effective ways to accomplish this specific task um, and try to look at it through, um, through that lens? Next slide. Um, and then <laughs> experimentation is key. Um, you actually do want to encourage uh, failing early and failing fast as key to lowering the cost of, of learning. Um, and then don't don't retain that information um, just you know to your group. You want to share that retrospective um, outside of your agile team um, if the learning is a value to the rest of the organization or other teams that are coming up on transition as well. Um, you know, involving the teams earlier in the process to make sure that there's a clear understanding of the process and the product team's involvement, um, getting your process owners um, on board early uh, to make sure that the process is helping the teams in the organization to achieve their goals and not impeding or, or slowing them down. Um, you want to build a management system um, that is robust and, and comprehensive, um, but doesn't constrain the organization. Um, and, and when you do that, your, you know, your certifications or your audits or your appraisals, those things that you're looking to achieve um, will just naturally fall out of that, that um, business management system. And then um, uh, have more regular reviews to focus on improving your processes and less on determining process fidelity through auditing. Um, and the reason for that is um, uh, you don't want to assume that the processes are optimal um, and that the people with the knowledge who are actually hands-on keyboard doing the work um, you know, are not. Those, those, your knowledge workers, um, you know, they are closest to that problem space and um, can really help and in, in, inform, inform you in the development um, of those processes. And uh, the, the next step, uh, the next step for JSEC um, and, you know, the organization uh, as a whole really is just to um, continue, you know, with, with that relentless improvement, um, we have really adopted SAFE's focus on relentless improvement. So, you know, we are not stopping and resting when we think um, it is good enough, the system looks good enough. We are always looking for ways to improve. We're always looking for ways to do things better. Um, you know, again, this isn't meant to be interpreted as what you're doing right now isn't good enough. Um, what we're saying is, wouldn't it be great if we could make this better? And I think that that's a subtle nuance, but um, process improvement is, is also a mindset uh, change. And we wanna make it rewarding um, for people to want to improve things. We don't want to be um, demoralizing or, or you know, discouraging to them um, you know, in, that, in that process. And so, um, what we're doing is, you know, just taking these lessons learned and the best practices from our transition experience and uh, working with our teams to apply those things to uh, transform the remainder of the organization. Um, so retrospectives and best practices um, are incorporated into future trainings um, so that those transitions will operate more, more efficiently and, and effectively. And um, this is how you can, you can reach me if you all have uh, any questions about the material um, we talked about today. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, and we'll be touching um, the questions that were submitted during that in just one minute. But before that, I really want to talk about the next webinar. We're going to run it on July 29th at 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, 5 p.m. Central European or 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, it's going to be about real world budgeting and safe lean portfolio management. And it's going to be uh, by Dwayne Stroman. He is an SPCT for Agile Sparks. 
Uh, if you're interested in our public classes, you can see the list below. We have a few classes in July and August. Uh, and if you need to register, uh, you can reach uh, to us uh, directly. If you need help with your value stream uh, and your company, let us know. We can always help. Said that, um, let's uh, talk about uh, the questions. So, Danielle, um, <clears throat> there was a few questions submitted. And one of them, I will start uh, top, uh, top to, the, to bottom. Uh, everything can be a user story. So what about the job story? Any experience with that? Um, the job story in, in, in what, in what sense? Uh, that the was the question. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, well, um, you know, uh, well, I guess I could say, um, the way that, um, my organization, we're a services organization. Um, you know, we don't do software development, um, but we still use a tool like Azure DevOps to, uh, track and manage our work, and we still write our our you know our problem statements in a typical uh, user story format. You know, as a such and such process performer, I want to do this so that this thing, um, and we've found that to be um, you know very effective um, for us. Okay, the next question by Elvin, and I think you touched a little bit about it before. But are there any incompatibilities between SAFE and CMMI? And if yes, how to resolve? So um, I would say that it's something that is, um, you know, the, the disconnects, you know, that I see that are really the most impactful right now that we're really working to resolve um, is sort of early on in, um, in that proposal RFP um, phase. Um, again, because if you don't have um, someone with agile experience um, really trying to help you figure out how to do some of this planful work um, in an agile way, um, it can get really tricky again to uh, to you know have uh, you know have to submit contract modifications or try to you know plan agile work in a in a waterfall um, way, um, you don't really realize the the benefits, um, you know, or or all of the outcomes that you're looking for. Um, so I would say, um, you know, more more work to be needed for both, um, you know, CMMI and and Safe, and in, in really kind of getting um, involved earlier in, um, you know. Uh, in, in that proposal effort, maybe having some, um, some folks uh, consult on your, on your growth and sales or your BD teams. Thank you. Now, the next question is, is, it's also a question we get a lot as a company and, and what do we do with all those roles that we have in traditional product, project development? And, and I mean, there's a lot of them. What do we do with them now? Yeah, so um, I, I know that some people get a little bit nervous, like where, you know, do I need to find a new home now? Um, what do I do, uh, you know, with those people? Um, and um, SAFE has this, this dual operating system um, where they have, you know, the, the network, um, the, you know, the teams, the agile teams who are actually working on, on the product or, or solution delivery. Um, and then you have your organizational hierarchy and those two things coexist. But those, those people, um, I, I'd say, I guess in SAFE, the hierarchy is a little bit more flat. Um, some of those roles turn into um, you know, product owners or scrum masters or release train engineers. Um, and then you know, some of the other folks just, they become managers of people. They're focused on, um, you know, developing new capabilities and um, growing, you know, skill and, and talent in their staff. Got it. Now we do have a few more minutes here. So let me ask you one more question that added here. And, and it is, how do we measure success? Now, we, we will never be done, obviously, uh, but, you know, how to know we're on the right path to success? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think you want to really um, start out with uh, with with your goals. What are your organizational objectives? Um, really plan those out in the, in a smart format. Um, 
and and then uh, develop a process architecture that is based on um, you know agile principles and the same same principles that you would use in um, in product development. You want the the the, the illities, right? Um, you know uh, something you know developing your system to be maintainable, you know usable, um, scalable, et cetera. And um, you know that should be one of your 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 primary goals, and then um, you want to um, you know track um, you know the 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 trend or the, your trajectory towards achieving those goals with um, with setting up some some measurement constructs um, you know so you'll know you're you're on um, the right path to getting those gaps closed. Got it. Now, the last question we have here is, how do we transform organization-defined processes to accommodate both the model and framework? What is the first step? Um, well, I think I touched on that just a little bit, but um, I think the first step there is, uh, again, the same thing. Um, you want to define what those goals are, um, make sure that they're measurable. Um, you don't want those vague or, or squish, squishy goals. And then really pay close attention to um, your 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 process architecture and make sure that it is um, built on those those same um, principles you you use in your product development. Uh, thank you, Danny. And I think uh, that was all the questions, unless uh, people type in more questions in the last minute. But um, I think that was all. And I do really want to thank you for taking the time and running this webinar for us. And um, uh, I want to thank every, everyone who attended the, the webinar. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me, uh, reach out to Danny, uh, or reach out directly to Agile Sparks. Uh, and uh, we will see all of you in our next webinar. Um, so don't hesitate. And thank you for today. And see you next time. Bye -bye. Thanks so much. Bye.